Here we're going to look at the very basics of creating an accessible PDF. Um, what is an accessible PDF? Uh, that can vary depending on the audience, but um, broadly speaking, it is a PDF with the correct reading order and um, alt text. Okay, so I'll just show you what that might look like. Um, so here is a PDF. Okay, and when a screen reader reads this, it's going to read things in order. Okay, and if we don't set it up, um, the screen reader will not necessarily know uh, what order to read things in. So, for example, it might read antipasti, and then it might read bread and butter, and then it might accidentally jump to arancini, and then it might go to plant based parmesan. Okay, it will not always know what order to read in, and even in a simple layout, but you can imagine in a more complex layout, it, it might read it wrong. The screen reader might read it wrong, okay? And the other thing is, when we get to an image, does it have alternate text? So here we have an error. No alternate text exists. So what would happen is, the screen reader would probably read the file name of this image, which might be something completely useless, um, or it might read nothing. It might just say there's an image, okay? So we're gonna talk about uh, how to fix that, uh, what it should look like, is something like this, spaghetti arranged with uh, colorful, and then it, it would say the rest, colorful spices. It would read the rest of the art, uh, the alt text out. Okay, um, now we're using Acrobat right now, and Acrobat actually, a little bit confusingly, shows the reading order in two different ways. Uh, the first way is, is here, in the order tab, and if you don't see it, you wanna go to view, show hide, navigation pane, and you want to find order, okay? And the other place it shows the reading order is in here in tags. Now, order is uh, an older way of uh, establishing reading order, and so Acrobat's still using it. But the reality is many screen readers, in fact, most screen readers and the ISO, so the uh, International Standards Organizations for PDF, uh, want us to use tags now, all right? Um, so tags have more, let's say, cross-functionality. They're compatible with more readers. So we also, unfortunately, need to make sure the tagging is done correctly, um, and we need to establish the reading order in this panel, okay, the tag panel. So you can see it looks a little bit different, right, from reading order, and it doesn't tell us the reading order as nicely, all right? Um, but it, it's still there, you know, when I select this, see as I'm going through these, right, it's showing me the reading order just fine, okay? So this is kind of a tricky one because there's so many H3 paragraph, H3 paragraph, but you know, on a, on a large document, this would be much simpler, right? Because you might have one heading on a page and four or five paragraphs. So it would be a lot less of, of all of these tags in here, okay? Um, tags are important to get right because the screen reader has the capability to jump from tag to tag. So like imagine you are using a screen reader and you start reading, uh, let's say, uh, section two here and you see heading two and it tells you it's the antipasti. If you're like, no, no, I want to jump to mains, the screen reader user can jump from this H2 all the way to the next H2, right, which is salads and then say, no, no, that's still not what I want, and then jump all the way here and get to mains. Okay, so that's what's really nice about this um, for screen reader users and tagging is that they can jump from the tag to tag. H2 is a tag, H3 is a tag, all right? Um, so let's look, at, let's look at how to do that. We'll talk about what makes this reading order out of InDesign and what makes the tagging out order out of InDesign, and I'll teach you how to set up both, all right? So let's jump into InDesign right now. And we're also gonna pull up our basic steps, okay? Our steps to establishing the um, accessibility of a, of a PDF. The first thing we wanna do is set the document title, okay? So if we go File, File Info, we can give this a document title, okay? And why do we need a document title? If your file name is something obscure or has lots of slashes and dashes or underscores, the screen reader will read that and sometimes it just becomes a garbled mess, okay? Um, 
you know, file naming is not always directly connected to the, the title of the book or, or whatever the PDF is. This document title, what we put here, this is what the um, screen reader will identify the document as for the user. So it's really important to get that right. Um, another thing is, you know, sometimes on the internet, if you open a PDF on the internet, if you if you ever were to read the URL bar, it can be extremely confusing, just tons of numbers. So instead of reading those tons of numbers, the screen reader will read the document title. So that's why we need that, okay? Uh, the other thing we need to do is make sure all of our paragraph styles have the correct language set for a given document. Okay, so here we have language and it's set to English USA. Okay, this is so the screen reader knows what language it's reading. And different screen readers have different uh, abilities and some are good and some are not quite as good. Um, but like in this example here, right, we have an English document, but some of the words are not English, they're Italian. So something like um, beef carpaccio or fried boccaccini or antipasto plate, or even il fornello. The screen reader will struggle to read these words if it thinks they are English. But if you set a document, uh, sorry, if you set a paragraph style and you set the language to be Italian, then the screen reader will you know, know that, oh, this is not, um, you know, this is not il fornello, right? It's il fornello, and it will know that, you know, this is not, um, this is not, you know, um, brush, brush cheetah, right? If you said this in English, brush cheetah, it's bruschetta. Okay, so um, that's why we care about setting language. Uh, super important, um, and even more important if you have mixed languages that aren't even using the same alphabet, right? So if you have um, well, non-English alphabet in here, you really need to set the language. Otherwise, the screen reader will be super confused. Okay, so that's the that's the that's step two. Okay. The next step is to make sure we have alt text for all of our images. Okay. So let's do that right now. I'm going to select one of my images and I'm going to go to object, object, export options. So like that. And we're going to click on alt text and we're going to set it to custom. And here we can insert you know, whatever we want. This is a uh, uh, spaghetti in a pesto sauce with a dollop of burrata. Okay. And, you know, writing alt text is, you know, um, there's a little bit of judgment involved. And really what you want to focus on is, is, I guess, content. And what is content and what is decoration? So if you feel that these spices and the basil are just decoration, then there's no need to include them. Okay, and that what's decoration and what's um, content will vary. And sometimes that's a negotiation with the client and the copywriter and the photographer. You know, why is this photo here? Um, in some cases, you actually don't even want to describe the photo. Um, you, want, you want to make the screen reader ignore the photo. So an example might be a watermark or a running head or um, maybe even a logo, right? If, if the client wants the logo on every single page, you do not want the screen reader saying logo.jpg on every single page, right? So when you have that, that kind of that graphic or a figure, which is supposed to be ignored by the screen reader, you set it to artifact, artifact. So how did I get there? I went to tagged PDF, apply tag, apply the artifact tag. And once something is tagged as artifact, the screen reader will ignore it, okay? But because I don't want this to be ignored, this is content, I want it to be described as spaghetti in a pesto sauce with a dollop of burrata, I'm gonna hit done. And now we have a salad, so I'll do my salad as well. Object, object export options, um, oh, looks like I already did this one. It's a salad with radish and oranges. Okay, so, um, you know, I like to tag all of my images as they come in. 
because I don't want to end up with this giant document, you know, 100 page document, 200 page document. And then I'm manually trying to find all the images and tag them. Um, that's kind of a nightmare. So I like to do them. Um, I like to do that as soon as I bring the image in, I give it an alt tag. And that just makes my life easier. So our next step is to thread all of the text frames together in the reading order. Okay. Remember, we want to minimize the number of text frames because that would mean um, that would make it easier for us to keep the reading order, you know, flowing uh, as we want. Let, let me show you what I mean by that. Um, let's turn on our, our, our text threads. So uh, view, just view, show text threads. Extras, show text threads. Okay, and this will show which text box is linked to which. So right now I have the whole menu just in this text box, right? If I, if I extended it, it will just go on and on and on, right? The, the whole menu is in there. What I want to do is thread it to the next text box. So I'll click on this little red plus, And you can see I get all the next text coming up here. And I'm going to add it into the next text box. And here's my line showing it's threaded. And then I'm going to thread this one to this text box. And then I've got my one, two, three more text boxes set up here. I'm going to click here and thread this to this one, and this to this one, right, and so on. And I'm just going to thread these last ones up, even though there is no more text. Maybe I'm going to add text in the future, so I want them threaded up. Okay, so here is our reading order established. Now it understands. You know, it has to read. Kind of like if I just held the mouse, or sorry, my keyboard, arrow key, see how it's going in this order? It's going to read in that order. And then when it gets to the bottom, my cursor is going to go, go, go. It's going to get to the end, and then it's going to come up here. All right. So that will keep the reading order um, established, which is, well, which is what I want. The next step is to keep our images in line with the reading order. Um, I want to make sure that my images get read in the order that they're appearing with the text, you know, assuming they are directly relevant to the text, right? Um, so one way we can do that is to anchor the image into the text. Okay, and there's a few ways to do this. I'll show you one, right? Um, let's, let's do that now. First, I'll just move my images out of the way here. Now, I've got this salad, and I want to put the salad into the text, like not, not over the text box, not even over the text box with text wrap. I want it like literally in the text frame as a piece of text, right? So the way to do that is to cut it. So you can use Command or Control X, or you can go Edit, uh, Cut. And then navigate to where you want this image. So say I want it between the Mista salad and the Caesar salad. Okay, create a paragraph and paste in your image. Now, um, you can see that it's 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 a big image and it's kind of like a giant letter right now. So it's covering up the text behind it because it's so big that you know it's bigger than one one line of text, so to speak. Okay, but the good thing is it's literally in the reading order right now. So that, that's kind of nice. Um, something to kind of be aware of is that this, this image is now treated like a text item in a paragraph style. So just like every other paragraph, it's going to get style like space before, space after, letting. Okay, and those things right now are, are being applied to it as the P style. Why is it the P style? Because when I hit enter and created a new paragraph, I was I was in the P paragraph style. So you might find it useful to create a whole new style. 
and call it figure. Figure is the word that screen readers use to identify um, images and logos and graphics. So we'll use the word figure, okay? And that will allow you to control things like, like space before and space after. Okay, we'll just give you, um, did, you see, did you see what happened there? Keep your eye on Caesar salad. See how that's all changing? This will allow you to control these things um, a little bit more easily, um, you know, and, and it will keep things from jumping around in unexpected ways, okay? So uh, I'm just gonna press okay. And now we've got this, that you can see this figure paragraph style is now applied. All right, cool. Now we want to take this image, which is an anchored object, right? It's anchored into the text. And we just want to format it a little bit so that it doesn't, you know, cover everything up and kind of make a mess on us. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to select my text box. I'm going to select my image. And you'll see the little anchor icon that's telling me that, hey, this is an anchored image. And so right click on the image and say anchored object options. Cool. So now um, we can position this a little bit so that it's not, you know, overriding the text in, in that way. Um, make sure you turn on preview while you're doing this. I'll take the guesswork out of it. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with above line. Now above the line means that the image is, well, like, just above the line of of the paragraph where you placed it on so you can see my baseline here you can see the image is just above it All right and look that you know that looks pretty good to me um you know i i'm, I'm actually happy with that positioning but i will uh show you some other options here um let's get back in there i'm going to right click anchor object options and i'm going to click um position custom all right now custom is kind of cool because the like let's say location of this image is now wherever I want it on the page but the reading order of this image will still be right here right in that paragraph where I placed it so let's take a look at that if I hit okay I can now move this image places. Whoops. I can now move this image. Say I wanted the image to be here. I can place it here. But it will still be read when when the screen reader gets to this paragraph. You can actually see a little Y thing in there, like a little Y with two lines. That signifies the anchored object. So uh, now I'll just turn on text wrap. If you don't see text wrap, somewhere up here window text wrap oh it's right here window text wrap okay and I'll use this setting which just makes the text go above and below it okay and there we go so even though the image is here it will be read when the text gets to here if that makes any sense If we want to get rid of, like, if we want to add some space down here, that should be done in text wrap. Although I guess we could do it in paragraph styles as well. I'm just curious. Let's let's see. Uh, space after. Nope. Never mind. We're gonna do it over in text wrap. I'm just gonna add some space below it here. There we go. Okay, let's look at uh, another way to do these images um, without anchoring them, because some people find anchoring to be very annoying. Um, so we'll do that different way. Here I've got my image. I'm gonna put it exactly where I want it. I'm gonna turn on text wrap, and I'm going to uh, just add some space there, okay. So I placed my image and it's you know right where right where I, I need it, I guess.
but it's not in the reading order, right? It's it's like if the screen gets to spaghetti meatballs twenty ninety five. The next thing it sees is not the image. The next thing it sees is fettuccine alfredo. All right, but that's actually not what I want, right? I want this image to be read right after it reads spaghetti and meatballs. I want it to describe this image. So um, we'll have to do it over in Acrobat if we're not gonna anchor it into the text here in um, InDesign. And, and that's actually okay. It's, it's kind of a preference thing as long as you do it. That's, that's really what matters. Okay, so uh, when we export it, I'll show you how to do that. All right, that's step six. Okay, then the other thing we wanna do is open up something called the articles panel and use it to ensure the reading order is as correct as possible. Okay, so we have a pretty simple document here, which means the articles panel will, um, will not be um, super critical. So I'm going to click on articles. Okay. And it says no content. Drag stories and objects here to add an article and add content to it. Or command click, blah, 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 blah. So we could command click, or let me just show you. I can drag this in and I could call it title. Okay. And I could drag this in and call it menu. Right? So it's just, you know, they use the word articles. I guess that's just left over from like the print world. If you were doing like articles in a magazine or articles in a newspaper, you want them read in a certain order. So it's just using the word articles, you know, even though we're talking about these headings, right? So we drag them in. Now, this is all one article, let's say. You might also call it a story, but this is all one article because I've threaded them together. So you'll see when I click on the first the first text box here, you see this little blue thing comes up? That's this whole thing. That's all of this, all the way down to here, including all of this, right? So right now, the reading order is gonna be the title and then the menu. It's gonna read this, this title, and then it's gonna just start reading all of this. If, if you had done this differently, let's suppose you had done this um, as all individual text boxes. So I'll show you what that looks like. First, I'm going to clear out all of these articles I've established. Okay. And then I'm going to um, unhook this and paste this back in here. All right. In that case, these are no longer linked. This one is no longer linked with this one. This one and this one are no longer linked. If we want this to read correctly, we would drag them in in order like this. Title, maybe I'll say uh, column one, and then I'll say column two. Oops, column two. And this image here is um, this image here is placed in line, so you know uh, we don't actually have to do anything. It's already in the reading order. I'm going to take it out of the reading order just to provide an example. So now we just have just this image all on its own. So I'll add the image in, and I'll say uh, salad image. And then that would be red. So it would read this, this, and this. Okay. Um, let's just add a little more complexity here. So I'll remove uh, these, and I'll sh I'll close this up and bring this image in, and then I'll bring in I'll paste this column of text back in here. Right and drag this in, column three, right? So it would read title, then it would read column one, column two, salad image, column three, all right? Um, 
on a small document, this might be easier. On a large document, this might be harder. All right. I just want you to see that there's different ways to do this and how you have your document set up may determine the way you create this order. Right. Um, I'm going to hit command Z and go all the way back to it to how it originally was, because that's the way I prefer to do it. All right. So I've got my articles back, right? Uh, back to nothing. I'm going to drag in my title, call it title, and I'm going to drag in my first column here and call it menu. And then we're all good. Uh, the last thing step here, which you have to do, whether you use the method I'm using or the one I just showed you, the, the one where everything is in its own text box. We're going to click this hamburger menu here and say use for tagging order in tagged PDF. Okay, we're going to use that. Why? See this? See the order of things here? Right? All of these, these are our tags. And this is the order that these tags are being displayed or, or read. Clicking this little button means that whatever the order of the things are here is, is the exact same order you'll get in your PDF. Right? So articles, this tagging order, the order of things here, will become the order of things here. And that's what you want. All right, excellent. Um, what's next on our to-do list? I'm going to add one. Set up the tags. This is one of the most important ones. Set up the tags. So um, these tags that we see here, H1, H2, H3, um, where do these come from, right? How does it know what's H2, what's a heading two, and what's a heading three? How does Acrobat know that? Um, and the answer is the designer tells Acrobat what's what. And the way we tell it is by looking at our paragraph styles and deciding which one is an H2 and which one is an H1 and automatically assigning a given tag for each paragraph style. Okay, so in my case, um, because I knew that I was going to do this, when I created my paragraph styles, I called them things like H1, H2, H3, right? Um, which means that when I create my tags, I can easily match up which, which each should be, which is like the designer creating it. Oh, here's my paragraph style. It's a title. Um, I didn't call it title. I called it H1. So I know that when I tag it, I'll just tag it as H1. So you may need to figure this out for yourself. If you have a title, you mean to, you need to tag it H1. If you have a subtitle, you need to maybe tag it as H2 and so on. Um, but let's look at how to do that. We'll go to window, utilities, tags, right? And I'm going to create some tags and I'm going to use the ones that the screen reader needs, which are H1, H2, H3. I only have all the way up to H4 on this document, so I'll stop there. And then I'm going to add P. Okay, P for just paragraph. And like I said, I knew I was going to do this. So that's why I created these to match. Okay, um, you may not have. And you know what, just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to um, add one here called like subheading subheader uh, TOC. Let's just say this is the subheader on my table of contents. Let's map, let's, when I say map, I mean connect our paragraph styles with the tags. So we're going to say map styles to tags. All right. And I'm going to click this map by name button. All right, and it's just it's just a smart way of the computer saying, oh, I see. Eric has named the P, P, the, the style P, and the tag P. So Eric must want those to be like a one-to-one -one connection. All right. Um, and then we might have something like, uh, where is our subheader TOC? Subheader TOC. You the designer will have to say to yourself, okay, what would that be if someone was navigating? Would that be H1, H2, H3? 
uh, like I don't know, let's just say it's actually the H2, okay? Um, no, it would be probably be an H3. So it's gonna depend on your design. Right? So there you go, um, figure, okay? We're gonna leave it not mapped uh, because figures will auto, it's an image, so it will automatically be tagged as figure by the, um, by the software. So actually we don't have to do that in this case. Okay. Again, the, the reason we're doing this is so that our paragraph styles produce these tags over here, which can be read by a screen reader so that the screen reader can easily navigate the document. All right, now, okay, now it's showing all this stuff. What, why is it showing these colors? Um, because these, uh, these colors here are visual indicators of what the content is tagged as. So look, we see this orange guy, why? Because this is H2. We see this green guy, why? Because it's an H3, all right? Uh, if, if you don't see these, it's gonna be uh, view, structure, high uh, tag markers and tagged frames. So I'll just get rid of that. View, structure, hide tag markers, or view, structure, show tag markers. Okay, um, Il Fornello, see it's tagged in black because it's H1. I, I hope that's pretty straightforward. Um, I agree, it's a little bit funny sometimes, like the way that the tags end, right? Like you would think that this, this is the opening tag, it says, okay, green h3 starts here and green h3 ends down here I, I i wish indesign would put it over here but it doesn't okay and don't worry about it uh, it's going to be fine it's, it's going to be just fine uh you can manually tag okay you can manually tag things so say i want to for some reason tag this as h4 i can do that i don't know why like there may be occasions where the auto tagging is not working okay um, but yeah, you can manually do it if you need to. All right, cool. Um, there is one last thing we can do with tagging, and that is create a table of contents. So let's go over to InDesign here, and we're gonna click on, uh, sorry, Acrobat here, and click on bookmarks. See all these bookmarks here? Screen readers can read through these bookmarks. So again, you can imagine if you, if you wanted to like scan what's in a document in the same way a sighted person would scan this table of contents and just kind of shoot through until they find what they need, um, screen readers will read down this so that a user can jump to where they want. So like this might be chapters, you know, who knows, right? Um, it, it, the point is it breaks up the document so people can jump to the content they need. Um, this can be auto-generated really, really easily once your document is all tagged up. So uh, let's do that now. We're going to go to Layout. Wait, I lied. Where are we going to go? Never mind, I didn't lie. Layout, Table of Contents. Okay. and we're gonna pick which things we want to appear in our table of contents. Okay, so, you know, you probably don't want every single paragraph to be in your table of contents, right? We probably want H1, H2, H3 in my case, right? So I'm gonna add H1, H2, H3. This will depend on your document, okay? And then you see this little option here, create PDF bookmarks. That's why we're doing this. Um, you know, th that's what we're getting. That create PDF bookmarks will take H1, H2, H3 and put them here in Acrobat for the screen reader. And I mean, this is just good practice, even if you're not a screen reader user, right? This is super handy. So um, I'll hit OK. And then it just automatically generates that as a text frame ready to be placed. So I'll click and drag 
and that's going to place this text frame and like it's super messy because it's using the paragraph styles um, and I know it's kind of gross to just leave this on the pasteboard um, but that's what you do that's, that's how it goes okay so cool so now we're gonna um, export this so I'm gonna say file export Okay, I'll just call this um, example test.pdf. And we want to set it to interactive, Adobe Interactive PDF. Um, by default, print will not export with tags. It will not create an accessible PDF. There are ways to do it, but um, generally you don't ex export a print ready PDF, you know, at high resolution. It would be a, a giant, giant file, which is the opposite of what you want for digital. So um, we, we don't, we just don't use it. Um, and, and it's probably a bad idea to export, um, to try to make a print PDF accessible. Um, you really need a good reason before you do that. So we're gonna go interactive PDF, save. Okay. Now we want to make sure that we checked create tagged PDF, right? That's the whole point we're doing this is tagging it so a screen reader can jump through it in the correct order. And then we're gonna click use structure for tab order. Now actually, um, structure is kind of like a, almost like a backup. Um, structure is what is related to, remember there's order and tags. Structure is what determines this. And we're gonna use it just as a backup, but actually we probably don't need it. So uh, click it anyways, but that's okay. Cool, so now I'm gonna hit export. Generate that PDF and then let's open it up. Acrobat, all right. So here's my PDF. Um, I've got all of my bookmarks are in here. Perfect. We can check the Acrobat reading order Okay, so um, this is again a visual indication that is effective for some screen readers, but not most. Okay, but my reading order looks good. Il Fernello is first, and then we jump to Antipasti, get to the bottom of this column, and we see Aaron Chini. Um, you know, uh, my text anchor object is working well. Remember, I wanted this salad to show up where I anchored it here. So it's 39, and then it, it will jump to this and read this and then it will go to um, the next salad, right? So um, even though I visually have it out of order, the screen reader will still read it in a logical order, even though it's placed in mains, which, you know, as a design choice makes no sense. I just wanted to demonstrate how you would um, place an item in logical reading order when it is visually out of reading order, okay? Okay, now we have, um, this image is just completely out of order, right? It doesn't even, it didn't even get assigned a reading order. All right, so that that is something we're gonna have to fix, okay? And we could fix it over in tags. We're gonna fix it over in tags. Remember tags is this one here, looks like a little tag. And remember if you don't see it, View, show hide, navigation panic, uh, tags. Okay, so go to tags here, and um, we're gonna review our reading order because um, remember the tags is the new way. This is the ISO standard. This is the one we should be kind of using. Um, so all of these tags here are like my whole document, right? So if I click it, you know, it'll take me wherever I'm going. So let's try to find this image. Uh, what I, the reason I think we're missing the, this image here is because we have not added it to the articles panel. I remember the articles panel is where the tagged items order is established. Um, all right, so let's let's do that. We'll go to uh, uh, 
window articles right and um, here's our missing image right so I hope I hope you can see the one that was placed in line with the text that one worked right that guy that one this one here mains let's, let's find that let's scroll to where it should be remember I put it right after um, right after these salads here paragraph figure Caesar salad here's my figure and if I right click and select properties we can see our alt text is there that's good but this one is just kind of plunked in so I need to add that into my articles and I'll just call it I don't know spaghetti okay and it's gonna kind of be its own thing because it's not part of the menu article it's its own little article uh, which is fine maybe this is how you want to do it right the point is the problem is I can't open menu and get past a like into it well I can um, so maybe I'll do that but I can't put it in line with the text anyway like I can't break up this text I can't insert it into the middle of the story um, but I can add it as part of the story so that's fine so let's uh, let's export again and see if we can now see at the bottom of this see our spaghetti um, with command E save it again I'll just I'll just save it as test 3 good let's open up test 3 open with Adobe Acrobat tags here's our menu all right and there is our image 4 properties good our our our, our alt text is working okay so what I want to do is find spaghetti and meatballs and drag this into yeah sorry underneath spaghetti and meatballs so um, I can just click here okay it's close closer closer good and what I'll do is I'll open I'll open it so I know like this is the one I want to get to I'm gonna drag it up just drag figure up until I see And there we go. Now we'll read 2095. It will then read this alt text and then go to Fettuccine Alfredo. Okay, so you're almost always going to need to do a little bit of cleanup. Okay, and I'm even noticing that there's a mistake right here uh, over in the order panel, okay, which is the old way, which Acrobat still uses, but most screen readers do not, um, where it's got after the beet salad it's got 38 39 and then we're going to 40 over here but i remember if you remember i actually anchored this image i anchored it here you know after caesar salad right remember see that it's anchored before caesar salad and they've got it 39 40 after beet salad and i could rearrange it here or i should rearrange it here even though this is the less common, um, the less common way of doing things, so I could drag this to just before my Caesar salad. Okay, so now that's ordered correctly, and let's check it in my tags. Now I have a feeling it's going to be correct in my tags, because that was the what I prioritized in my design, that the tagging order. Um, so let's try to find that. We've got. Uh, Okay, there's the image. I've selected it, and now when I select this, it should be Caesar salad, or just before Caesar salad. Yeah, there we go. Figure, so it's just before Caesar salad. Okay, now um, there's other ways to sort of arrange the reading order here. Okay, so you can use the properties panel here, or wait. reading order sorry right here reading order okay and uh, you could change it here but I really don't recommend doing it um, this is for this is more specific to um, Acrobat and Acrobat is 
far from the most common um, screen reading technology, okay? Um, the universal standard is what you see here, all right? So I hope that's helpful. Um, I hope you can see how ultimately, whether or not you go as one long story, like I have here, or many small stories, which are more strung together in the articles panel, it's ultimately up to you and it's up to the, it's dependent on the document you are creating. But the basics of what you need to know are here. Um, however you establish the reading order, that's what's important. And however you establish the tagging, that's what's important, okay? You need tagging and those tags have to be in order. That is like the number one goal. Um, so if you can do that, you're like 80% of the way to creating um, accessible documents. So thanks for watching and um, have a great day.